all this involve ground truthing? We have to read, we have to read both fiction and nonfiction about Florida and learn. And we certainly have to pay attention to the maps, but we also need to find our way out in, into, the, into the, to the real world, uh, to, to the outside world. Uh, this is a, a picture I took of a friend of mine as she was beginning her own uh, uh, solo paddle of the St. John's River and she was approaching the Puzzle Lake area and you can see why that's called Puzzle Lake. You have many opportunities and no signage. And like other lakes on the St. John's River, it's not a lake per se, it's a place where the river dilates out into a large uh, area of flowing water. In this case, it's almost like a sheet flow, very close to what you experience in the Everglades of Florida. So a very dif difficult river to, to, to discover, to, to describe, uh, because it's different things at different parts of its own life. Lots of Florida is like that, and we won't know that for sure unless we go out there, and in addition to the intellectual information we've stored away about that place, we have our own sensory relationship with that place, and then we can come to, the, to, to better really know that place. And we recognize the chance for discovery in the relic Florida wilderness via the protected land that's still here. We do hear a lot about loss, and loss is very real, and it, it, it will be never ending, the, the battle to try to, to protect and to, to manage growth, but also we have to acknowledge that Florida has worked very hard to accumulate public land here we likely have more public land than any other state. The average uh, public, uh, amount of public land in a state is about 16%. In Florida, if you add land and water, it's almost 33% of the state itself. That's a, that's a big chunk. The, the corollary of that is that a lot of this water, a lot of this land is dependent on ecological systems that are outside of the boundary of public land, such as the springs, much need areas for recharge or they will no longer be springs. Nonetheless, we still do have a third of our land tucked away uh, in parks, uh, wildlife refuges, uh, county land preserves. Here we have scenes, right all three of those were taken from the Wakaba where we have 110 square miles protected in public land. We have some of the wildest land and most, to me, aesthetically stunning landscape you're, you're likely to find here. And we have, we have springs, we have, the actual, we have the flowing tropical rivers. You can see the water marks on the cypress tree. You get a sense of how, how water rises and falls by the season itself. So the soul requires a vernacular life, as, as Thomas More ha has told us. It thrives not in sterile monocultures, but in the organic particulars of our living world. The, the, the obvious particulars are our little homes, or our businesses, or, or the way people live their lives. The sense of place that's embodied and how you have a life that's, that's truly connected to place. It's been shaped somehow by, by the existence of, of, of real, real nature and the history of that place.